Regina Marina, Admiral's Log, January 2nd, 1940. Mamma mia, we're at war. Germany and its ally Austria-Hungary have declared war on us and our allies, France and Great Britain. After the mutual build-up of forces, it was unavoidable. All nations have spent a decade or more researching new technologies of war, and all sides have been building new warships. And now the hawks in the German government have gotten their way, and war has been declared. The Regina Marina is ready for the task. We will control the Adriatic Sea and make sure any invasion attempts from Austria-Hungary will be thwarted. It is rumored that the Austro-Hungarian navy largely consists of heavy cruisers. This intel will prove critical in how we decide to deploy our own forces. While part of our navy is busy keeping the Austrians and Hungarians at bay, another part will set sail for the North Sea to assist our allies in keeping the German navy locked up. Trade is crucial to our economy and the Germans must not be allowed to block any of it. The emphasis for our navy will be on heavy cruisers. We will use battle cruisers to keep the enemy heavy cruisers at bay, while our battleships will serve as deterrence. The backbone will be a solid number of heavy cruisers of our own. Now, off to the chart room to plan our attacks. Andiamo. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to this new campaign. This is going to be the Italian campaign. Um, I have unlocked 1940 by making an edit to one of the files of the game. Linked down below in the description is an explanation of how you can do that. We're going to be starting in 1940, difficulty hard, AI opponent historical, and I'll be creating my own fleet, which is probably going to take up the majority of this episode. Now, this is the 1.05 patch, beta version. If you don't have that yet, go to Steam, right-click on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, and go to Properties, then go to the tab that says Betas, and click the beta so that you can join the beta program as well. It is a beta. Um, there will be stuff that does not work, maybe not work as intended. All these things you'll just have to accept. If you haven't seen all the new features yet, uh, there are a lot of new features in this patch, I would recommend that you have a look at the video that I posted just earlier today, which is an overview of all the different things that were added in this patch. For this video, I'm um, sort of assuming that you know at least some of these features. Although throughout the campaign, I'll be explaining slash, well, exploring and experiencing some of these new features myself, as I haven't really played that much with them yet. Now, if you're starting a new campaign, I have found that, especially since the campaign map is larger, and there are new playable nations, that loading a new campaign takes a lot longer than you might like, especially if you're starting in 1940, it seems, because the game has to go through all sorts of iterations starting at 1935, and then figuring out who uh, built what, who conquered what, who is in what situation economically. The game basically in the background is generating a lot of different ship designs and that can take a while. So grab yourself a coffee, a cookie, a tea, whatever you like. Uh, an alcoholic beverage is also very nice with this game and just wait for the game to get ready. Okay, here we go. Let me show you around the new campaign map. We have the Germans sitting over here. We even have what seems to be the starting phases of the Russians, but these are not playable at the moment, nor are they a factor in the campaign. The British, of course, with their own ports, but also the French. Le Havre, Brest, we got, uh, I think that's La Rochelle, and a French fleet over there. Well, fleet, a heavy cruiser. Um, a couple of Spanish ports, La Coruña, Bilbao, Huelva, Cadiz, Malaga, Valencia and Barcelona. And a whole scattering of French ports here. Marseille, Toulon, Nice. Uh, also Saint Florent on the island of Corsica. And Bonifacio. Small port though, 15,000 tons. My fleet. Oh, sorry. A few more French ports over here in Bizeterre and Tunis. And of course the British port of Valletta over there. Um, I have a lot of different ports. And I'm most likely going to be taking on the uh, guys over here. The Austro-Hungarians in Pula, Spalato, and Kataro. I am at war with Austria-Hungary and Germany. It is 1940. Um, you could argue that the Italians should be on the other side, but, well, they currently are not. Our GDP is pretty shit, <laughs> especially if you compare that to the British, which are fortunately my ally. 62 billion is what they get. 
as GDP versus my 22.8 million, sorry, billion. Uh, the French at 44.8 billion, the Germans at 34.5, and then we have the Austro-Hungarians at 20.7 billion. They have an active fleet of 31 ships. Okay, what do they got? They got, wow, this is going to be interesting. They got a battle cruiser, 23 heavy cruisers, three lights and four destroyers. So the AI with the Austro-Hungarian Navy went all out on heavy cruisers. That's good to know, because that means I can design my own fleet as I need it to counter the Austro-Hungarians. Um, what I'm going to try and do is deal with the Austro-Hungarian fleet from the ports of Ancona and Bari to make sure that they don't invade central Italy. I'm going to have to probably design either a cheap battleship or a high-end battle cruiser. Something that deals with heavy cruisers very well. I don't know what their design is like, but we'll see. Let's see. We have a whole slew of Italian hulls available, and these are generally very nice hulls. The Italians also have access to the large cruiser 2, which is an enormous hull. You can get this thing up to 42,500 tons. Um, I think that that is more than enough to take on the heavy cruisers that the Austro-Hungarians are fielding. It's... <laughs> a modern battle cruiser 1 is cheaper than a large cruiser 2. Yeah. Okay, the large cruiser 1, 36,000 tons. I think this might be enough. Now, we're going to be fighting very close to home with these ships, so 10,000 kilometers is more than enough. Let's put them at 38 knots. And let me introduce you to the new options here that we have, which are beam and draft. Beam is how wide is your ship, and a sleeker ship is more maneuverable. Um, a wider ship is more stable. If you go to the bottom right-hand side, you can see that I have a minus 9 for beam, which means that uh, my base accuracy is just far less. It does mean that the ship is better at accelerating because it's a longer, sleeker hull, and its acceleration, as well as sea turning, speed at maximum turning rate are far better. And so is operational range. But I don't need a lot of operational range. I just need a fat, heavy cruiser to deal with their ships. Uh, a fat, heavy cruiser, however, means that if I increase the... <laughs> if I increase the beam... By 10%, the price of the ship leaps from 92 million to 142 million. You can make some really stubby ships this way, can't you? Yeah. Okay, let's go for a stubby heavy cruiser of a maximum 26,000 tons. Something like that. Standard quarters, please. Uh, the draft, the height of the hull. So if you do this, Gonna make the hull higher. Interestingly, also the <laughs> motor launches. <laughs> uh, look at this. If I increase the draft of the ship, the motor launches also grow. <laughs> Not necessarily intended, but I find it very amusing. Uh, having a greater draft means that you have more survivability, but less stable shooting platform. So that's a problem and not necessarily one that I really want to tango with. A smaller platform, so having less draft means that, uh, let's see, we have more base accuracy because the turrets are going to be closer to the water, so less roll. You're going to get more acceleration, flooding chances uh, better, aka minus 15%, accuracy penalty for maneuvering is less, Accuracy bonus at cruise speed is minus 15%. So normally you get an accuracy bonus at cruise speed. You don't get that now. That's going to be interesting. Uh, sloped design, which means that you get a better ricochet chance. So you might not need as much armor. And you can reduce the price of the hull substantially. Because I'm at 76 million now versus a neutral of 97 million. Let's see if I can make this work. We're going to go with the modern components. This is the modern tower 8. I'm going to give them a rear tower 10, which takes up most of the ship. Let's see. We're going to, of course, go for group 4 armor. We're fighting heavy cruisers, so I'm going to give it a hefty torpedo belt. This is probably not going to work. Um, standard turbines. I think not. Gear turbines too, is that feasible? It's going to reduce the displacement by quite a lot. 
diesels are probably not the way to go. 176 million for a ship. Turbo electric drive, if you're gonna go really expensive. Uh, it is nice, however, having that plus 200% acceleration. But I'm not creating a speedboat, I'm creating a heavy cruiser. So gear to turbines 2 is good enough. And relative is 126 million or 224 million. I am going to stick with this. Let's get a compact angle funnel 2. Or maybe two funnels, actually. We get a couple of light mega funnels so that if this one gets knocked out, I still have that one. That should be fine. Putting firepower on this ship might prove difficult. Especially on the bow. I might have to make the ship a little longer. Main guns. I'm fighting heavy cruisers. Now this is the battle... No, it's the large cruiser hull. But it can have guns up to 18 inch. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I doubt it. I think that that's not quite right. Uh, we're fighting heavy cruisers. I think an 11 inch gun is enough. Let's go with 11 inch dual barrel uh, port and stern. There. 5.3 aft weight offset. 3.5. I'm going to make it slightly longer. So that my belt's going to be better. Although the price of the ship is already ballooning. Can I go to 30,000 tons? Come on, a bit bigger. Uh, oof. That's not a bit bigger, that's a load bigger. I don't like this part here. Oh well. What's my turning circle like? Oh, 964 meters? I'm not going into battle with that. Not against heavy cruisers. 624. Better. We'll just have to deal with this weird ship. Uh, the secondary tower is a bit big. You get 14 base accuracy, 17 aiming speed. This is more acceptable. Four weights, now 12. This looks a little weird. This tower then? 8.5 still. It's because I don't have the funnel here. 1.6 aft. That's good enough. That's good enough. I can potentially put that here. There we go. 0 0.3. Feasible. Okay. Turning circle. 6.2.2. Not great. Let's go for some barbette armor. Uh, add an all or nothing citadel. All the anti-flood. Reinforced bulkheads, a better propeller shaft, an auxiliary engine, uh, electric turning, 155 million. 377 meter turning circle though, that's good. We're going to need a radar rangefinder. You now get access to radar rangefinder 3, which gives you more gun aiming speed, more gun long range accuracy. For what I have here with the 11-inch guns, I don't think I'm going to be able to fight the enemy from outside of their range. Unless they have 8 or 9-inch guns. If they have 8s or 9s, they can fight 18-3. How much is this going to blossom the price? Not that much. Not even that much. But I still want a few more other gimmicks on this ship. Uh, reduce speed to 35 knots. Should still be enough to catch most heavy cruisers. Advanced hydraulics is good enough. Let's give you a... Long range accuracy bonus again. And again. 67 million only. Is that for three knots? Wow. I know that they changed this. Because if you get a bigger uh, speed bonus... That goes up exponentially. So if I were to go from 23 knots to 25 knots, it's a, it means it's a million. But if you go from 35 knots to 37 knots or 38 knots, boom. 39? This 
This is not right though. 37 knots to 38 knots adds 90 million. Boom. That's way too much. That's not as it should be. That's a bug. I'm not going to say that that's normal. Anyway, we have a couple of new sliders here as well. We have the um, what type of HE would you like and what type of AP would you like? Considering I'm fighting enemy heavy cruisers, I think they're not going to be that heavily armored. So semi-armor piercing might work, which gives you mine, uh, plus 80% semi maximum AP ricochet angle. I'm still not exactly sure how to interpret that. It might mean that you get more chance to pen, so less chance to ricochet. But you're also sacrificing a lot of AP shell pen at 45. I'm going to go uh, SAPBC, Semi-Armor Piercing Ballistic Capped Shell, which is somewhere between Semi, uh, so Semi-Armor Piercing and Capped Ballistic 2, which is all sorts of extra bonuses. Let's go Semi-Ballistic. Semi-Armor Piercing Ballistic Capped Shell. With these, um, plus 60 maximum AP shell ricochet angle, as well as a bit less pen, but I can boost that by going with heavier shells. Currently, let's say 10,000 meters out, I can do 12.9 inches of armor pen. And now I can do 14.2. Shell pen again. I can do, oh, I can do less. That's the Dunite Bursting Charge. This is flat out shell pen. But 35% flash fire explosion chance, that's not good. TNT. Yeah, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. It's better than having your ship blow up. And it's also going to make the shell pen a little less, but I'm willing to accept that. If I go to TNT 4, it's not even going to change that much. I was looking at the shell cost, the total ship cost, it's not that bad. Propellant. Uh, two powder. I want that shell pen back. It's going to make the ship more expensive, but not by much. So this gives me, at 10,000 meters, 15.1 inches of pen. Probably at very good angles as well with the uh, SAPBC. Okay, when it comes to high explosive, um, I'm fighting a few destroyers, mostly light cruisers. And a couple of heavy cruisers. How about this? It's not full incendiary. This is incendiary, by the way. That's a typo. They still need to change that. This gives you a massive amount of high explosive fire chance. But my chance to pen is extremely bad. At 1,000 meters, it would be 0 0.4. That's terrible. We're going to go with base fuse. See, that's a lot better. That's about 5.4 inches, 6 inches. I think that this, for the targets that I'm probably facing, is enough. Okay, acoustics. Yes, I want to have a sonar station on here. Sonar 3. No, I don't want to spend that much weight on... Oh, actually. It's 50 tons. It's fine. The more sonar I have, the better my torpedo detection chance, and thus the better the chance to save the ship. Let's see. Torpedo launchers against larger threats or secondary guns against smaller threats. Eight inch secondary? No way. Okay. Um, how big are these fives? Oh, they're pretty feasible on this hull. Yeah. Just need to turn the mirror mode back on. There. This means that against destroyers and such, I can still fire out to 10 kilometer range and I can do an okay amount of damage considering the amount of pen that I have. In this case, you can specify with the new patch what sort of HE pen or what sort of uh, secondary armor, ammo, sorry, secondary ammo type you want. So I could set, for example, if I'm facing a light cruiser, the main guns to HE and the secondaries to AP. Although, do they turn? They got that grayed out. No, I think that won't turn. Okay, we're gonna go for four inches. 
See, for me as a colorblind person, the difference here between this color, which is that side of the turret, I think it means they won't turn. The four inchers will. The five inchers won't. Because they're kind of grayed out. Can I do anything with this whole part? Or is this just decoration? Okay, fine. It's probably just decoration. I can set four inches there, 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 and there. A little bit of aft weight offset. We shift this. 0 0.2. Kill that. Boom. Balanced. Armor. Good lord. 13 and a half inches of main armor? On a heavy cruiser. Well, it's more of a battle cruiser at this point. I'll take it. Um, how much price can I save? Not that much. 37 knots is fine. Let's go for oil. So that I can go a bit further. <laughs> no. Barely. 46.55. 46. <laughs> That's not worth it. Semi-oil. Unbalanced rudder. Turning circle, 269. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, let's boost the fore belt a little. Let's boost the aft belt a little. And superstructure. These are heavy cruisers that we're facing after all. I'm probably building a monster ship again. Four and a half inch fore deck and aft deck, main deck, seven and a half inches. Why is my aft weight offset so bad? Shift. More. There. 75 million for a cruiser like this, I think, is a steal. I think that's very acceptable. Could I still add torpedo launchers for about 85 tons each? 64 tons. Here. <laughs> Four weight offsets, a bit of a problem. Fine, we'll add them here too. Yep, perfectly balanced, as all things should be. 21 inch torpedoes. Um, let's make them electrics. So that they're going to be capable of not getting detected, or at least not as easily. I think this is going to prove to be a fairly well rounded ship. It can deal with most targets, including the occasional battleship, although I'm not expecting to face one. They're fast. Yeah, I quite like this ship. Can I boost this? No, it's too much. Auto loading means they fire every 21 seconds. I like it. I really like it. I got a bit of displacement left. No, not that much. Conning tower then. Cannot have that get damaged. 12.5. There. Ship done. The, uh... Gioacchino class ship. That's going to be very difficult to pronounce. There. Save. Okay. How many of these do I want? Considering what I'm facing over on this flank here, I think two in Ancona... No, not two. Probably a roaming patrol of a whole bunch of them. Because they got nine there, eight there, and another six there. We're going to put a couple in Bari. Oh, they're battlecruiser class. Okay, they're class as a battlecruiser. That makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, we're going to go with a group of six. All of you are going to be in Bari. Southern Italy, here. And I can now move these ships, but I don't have the ships because the campaign officially hasn't started yet. Okay, um, that's one. I don't have to really worry about the left flank, I think. But if I want to go all the way over here and tango with the Germans, I'm going to need some long range, long range ships. So let's say that we park those in either Olbia or Cagliari. We're going to need a new ship. New design. 
let's see, Modern Battleship 1. Or Modern Battleship 2. Or we got the Fast Battleships. Whew, that's a really long haul. <laughs> that's 35 knots. That's 34 knots. 33, 32, 31, 30. <gasps> Oh, that drop is astronomical. That's double. Wow. I don't think that drop should be quite as bad. Oh, well. Um, let's just go for 30 knots. <laughs> I think that's fine. We're going to need a lot of range on these things. So we're going to go with oil. I might use diesels on them as well. Let's see. Modern Tower 3, Enhanced. We also got the secondary tower, advanced tower with funnels uh, four. It doesn't really line up, but it got the best base accuracy. Long range accuracy plus 32, long range accuracy plus five. Good lord. Not, not good enough. Um, operational range is nice, but it's going to make a less stable firing platform. <gasps> Oops. These sliders don't like the new draft mechanics at all. There. About 67,000 tons. Yeah, that increases your range substantially. Also, I still have to add funnels. Let's see. Diesels. They don't necessarily give you more range. But a funnel will. Boom, 23,431 kilometer range. Now we're getting somewhere, <laughs> literally. Okay, guns on these ships. I'm thinking I don't necessarily want 18 inchers. I don't have the ability to use 20 inchers on this hull. Oh, it's a battle cruiser. A 66,000 ton battle cruiser. No. Resistance plus 92, resistance plus 75? 80, 95, 89. I want a more survivable ship. The Littorio class. Yeah, why not? There was a historical Littorio class, if I'm not mistaken. Light secondary tower, plus seven and a half. Large secondary tower, plus 14. Tall, plus five. Advanced, plus seven. Long range accuracy is usually the name of the game. Because it just makes sure that you sink whatever's firing at you before it sinks you. Anyway, now I can get access to the main guns of 20 inch. Um, let's give these guys diesels, maximum range. Whoops. Citadel or nothing, anti flood, all of it, reinforced bulkheads, double hull bottom, anti torque. Three. If I increase this, I get that really tall hull, which is going to give you the bonuses of better sea keeping. Accuracy bonus from cruise speed is far better. Just don't maneuver, or you're going to face all sorts of issues. Go down. We can do 67,000, not this much. Go on. 